Released by Konami in 1991 on the Super NES, Super Castlevania 4 will be a fresh take on a classic entry. Directed by Masahiro Ueno, the game is a remake of the original Castlevania game, though in the North American version, it was originally presented as a sequel to Simon's Quest before being retconned again to match the re-established timeline. For a story, the game features a warrior named Simon Belmont who continues the blood feud against the vampire Count Dracula as it takes place after Castlevania II Belmont's Revenge and before Castlevania II Simon's Quest. For gameplay, the game is an action platformer requiring the player to fight, jump, and climb their way past 13 multi-part stages within a set amount of time for each. For combat, Simon's main weapon is the whip, though he may carry any one of five sub-weapons, all of which can be upgraded, and each requiring hearts as the currency for their use. Updated from the original version is that the whip can latch onto grapple points that allow Simon to swing across gaps and obstacles, and he may also move mid-air and while crouching. Also, while holding down the whip button, the whip may continuously be swung in any direction beyond the initial 8 compass directions. The story only gets larger from here, so let's cut it down to size with a recapitation. Set in the year 1691, the forces of good have suddenly and mysteriously started to weaken, resulting in the resurrection of Count Dracula, who has been storing up power for the last century for this very moment. This would not be the first time he has revived, as every time so far, his actions have been thwarted by a member of the Belmont family, and on a dark and eerie night, an evil group of people gather to begin a dark ritual to resurrect the Prince of Darkness. The ritual succeeds and Dracula rises from his grave, ready to begin his destructive terror across the Transylvania countryside. Seeing the rise of foul creatures, the Belmonts see the time has come, and call forth the current wielder of the vampire killer Whip, Simon, to destroy Dracula, put him back in the grave, and restore peace. Stepping forth before the intimidating magical palace, Castlevania, Simon finds the castle immediately senses the threat and erects a wall as a warning. Weaving through the outside garden and dashing over the drawbridge before it shuts behind him, Simon finds the bats, skeletons, bone pillars, and viper swarms merely warm-ups as he casually moonwalks up and down the stairs. Inside a cursed barn ahead, flying foes like Mr. Head and Medusa Heads are simple pests as Simon bashes down his first foe, the skeletal lancer Rodane, atop his unholy skeletal steed. Not falling for his stunts and tricks, Simon finds the road to the castle proper to be a long one, as he must now cross through a forest of monsters. Desecrated graves adorn the dimly lit forest floor, as zombie hands burst out to claim the living, and plant men emerge from thin air to sneak up and strangle Simon. Man-eating spiders drop down in his path, as spiky needle lizards seek to trip him up as he then exits the forest line into a murky swamp. Crossing the muddiest sludge in his way, frogs and ravens turn an evil eye to him, as thornweed plants sprout to ensnare him underfoot. Slithering slowly to stop the steps of Simon's mission, a full-sized Medusa sends her snakes forward, though her petrifying gaze fails to curse the prepared adventurer. The water ahead seems to clear, but is no less unusual, as it flows randomly, changing directions as it sweeps Simon along its current. Grasping claws and flying gargoyles try to take advantage of the confusion, as the waterway leads him into damp limestone caverns along the way. Familiar mudmen patrol down here, but splitting one literally creates two more in the process. A tall waterfall looms high before him as the Cascades make for a slippery ascent and lead up to an entire submerged city. There is little time to marvel at the lost architecture as mermen have made this their lair and fire knife-like jets of water at the intruder. The aquatic ruins are hardly sturdy, however, as footholds crumble beneath every step and chunks of the roof collapse before his very eyes as well. Skeletal dragons lunge out to snap and spit fire at him and fire eyes patrol the waterways, spilling water over him as Simon continues the winding climb. His progress is halted as the waterways flood up to his feet, trapping him between sinking depths and a pair of dragons called the Orphic Vipers. Escaping out, Simon finds himself before a derelict mansion, and entering, finds it currently occupied by skeletons that burst out of the very walls and trap platforms. The giant-sized and long-tongued Puexel crashes down to devour the visitor, but Simon simply smashes the skull and continues on. The layout of the manor takes a dark and haunted turn, as the rooms suddenly adorn themselves with deadly spikes and spin on themselves to drop him into them. He quickly grabs onto footholds for dear life, while Medusa heads flood out to take advantage of his precarious positioning. Finding flimsy footholds are the best he's going to get, Simon dashes ahead of the floor falling out under his feet as the tower he's in spins maddeningly around him. Beyond his more solid footing, though, sections of the floor now endlessly fall upward, again testing the warrior's speed and judgment to safely dash through the gaps. Appropriately atop this malevolent stone tower is the rock golem Coronat, who tirelessly hurls boulders at Simon as Simon seeks to break his body apart chunk by chunk with each lash. The sentinel defeated, Simon sees he has finally made it to Castlevania proper. The castle's entrance finds harpies carrying gremlins as the welcoming party, as whip-cracking skeletons fail to beat him at his own game. 
Emerging now before the grand archways of the front entrance, Simon finds Castlevania has left its doors open for him as he steps through, closing the door to safety firmly behind him. Dogs, zombies, and axe-slinging knights flood the classically-themed entrance hall as Simon climbs up to find himself forced to cross giant chandeliers in his way. Ghosts and spirits inhabit the next floor as chandeliers drop down overhead, fancy ballroom ghosts reach out for his life, odd ectoplasm wander the air, and animated coffins offer to bury him alive. The dancing specters now fly around him and haunted tables lurk at his feet, but Simon is hardly distracted by the phantasmic follies. Entering the library now, flying gargoyles and floating books veer out to catch him between the many shelves, and beyond, the giant portraits on the wall threaten to come alive and attack him unawares. Wolves prowl between trapped and statues, as Simon faces down a fierce knight named Sir Grackwool, who shatters out of his exhibit to answer the call of darkness. Simon barely has time to reflect on his win, as the floor quickly crumbles underfoot, sending him tumbling below. Descending down into the dismal depths of the deadly dungeon, skin-eating acid drips and pools around him, as Simon focuses on not becoming impaled by the many spikes lining the floors and ceiling. Crossing over disappearing platforms, Simon is met by the hulking Frankenstein's creature, who hurls explosive flasks at him as he encroaches closer, but he is too slow to dodge Simon's lethal snaps. The next area is the treasury, and while gold floods the floor and lines the wall with glittering riches, Simon is hardly tempted to even touch this cursed collection, especially as the ghosts of poor unfortunate souls rise up all around him and gilded skeletons shamble forward. Reaching the end, the coins and gems around him rise up to form a massive construct, the Zap Bat, who flies about and splits apart to try and slice Simon apart into pieces with the gems within its body. Shattering the foe, a stairwell unfolds before him, taking him to the next area, the Intimidating Clock Tower. Forced to keep moving across the spinning gears, Simon crosses the cogs and swings along to classic rhythms. Falling gearwork tumbles down, making the ascension all the more treacherous, as Simon persists upwards, making his way out to the ruined clock face, where bandages slither upward to form the fearsome mummy Akhmodan, even though he fails to stop the Belmont here. Making it now to the castle keep, Simon is met by welcome sounds and more welcoming Dulahans that are dusted before him. He outraces a crumbling bridge that bursts out bats at his every step and gets no time to rest as a massive saw eats away at the floor beneath him as he hustles up the castle's step, weaving between stone golems that erupt from the walls. Riding rising rocky platforms to the roof, the demon Slagra crashes down to end his hunt, leaping with trails of fire behind him, lunging with his sharp beak, and launching explosive fireballs from his spear. Not far after is the flying demon Gaibon, who swoops in to scorch the ground around Simon with searing flames, though the tested warrior takes out the second of his duo. Climbing up, the air chills, as before a grand green curtain, the Warden of Death, the Grim Reaper, collects himself before moving to collect Simon's soul. Skillful with his scythe and sickle, Death still does not come early for the Belmont, as Simon edges out a win and moves forward. Lanterns light themselves as he walks a solemn hallway, taking a moonwalk of faith to collect a hidden treasure trove of supplies. Climbing a red carpeted stairway, Simon finally comes face to face with his mark, Count Dracula. In his coffin room, dark lightning surges out, converging in a pillar of light that bursts down to reveal the vampire lord himself. Wasting no time, he lets loose a volley of fireballs before warping about, forcing Simon to stay sharp and strike him with small drops of guard. Columns of fire erupt out of the floor, ghostly whiffs of flame chase Simon into the chaos, and bolts of lightning rain down as he whips the flesh off Dracula's face. With a final smite, the blow is so heavy a nearby window shatters, trapping Dracula in a beam of sunlight. Turning into bats to escape the light, they are incinerated before they can get far, though one manages to just slip by. As the game ends, morning sun has risen on a new day, and Simon sees his job is completed. He escapes out of Castlevania as the dark magic weakens and the monument of power collapses unto itself, but in truth, he knows little of the terrible curse that awaits him. Super Castlevania 4 has enjoyed the success of selling over 630,000 copies worldwide.